So what I want to do is give you an example right now, right under this, of uh, something that uh, you do not have to simplify. So let's look at lithium oxide. Lithium oxide. This would be a good example. So lithium is Li and oxygen is O. All right, now what are the charges on lithium? If you look at lithium in the periodic table, it wants to have a plus charge, plus one. If you look at oxygen on the periodic table, it wants to always have a two charge, negative two. So you drag this two down here and you drag this one down here, then the resulting compound is gonna be Li2 from here, Li2, plus one goes down here, so it's O sub one. This is the final answer. And you should always ask yourself, can I simplify this? Well, this is a two and this is a one. There's nothing I can do to, to make that any simpler. It's two to one. I can't divide these guys by any, any number to make this guy any real, really any simpler. Whereas here it was two to two, so I could divide each one of these by two and get, and get this as an answer. So basically, most of the time when you do this, you're going to get something that's already fully simplified. You just circle your answer. If you ever get something that you can simplify further for these ionic compounds, go ahead and do it because the simplest ratio is really what we're after when we're talking about these formula units that form up these ionic compounds. And by the way, I'll just take a quick aside to explain why this little crisscross thing works. You see, these, this lithium it has a, only has a plus one charge. This oxygen is a, is a larger charge, but it's negative, it's negative two. So what it basically means is if I want my molecule to have a zero charge, I need two of these lithium atoms for every one of these oxygen atoms. Because this lithium atom only has a plus one charge, this oxygen has a negative two charge. So I'm gonna need two of these atoms to cancel out the oxygen. And basically, you can think about that if you want, to think about that all you want. That, that can always give you the right answer. But really, what it always amounts to is you take these numbers and you crisscross them, that's going to be the answer. So either way you want to think about it, it's fine. I find myself doing the crisscross method because it's bulletproof. You'll never get the wrong answer uh, that way. Okay? Oh, look at this as number five. Okay? So can't even number correctly. Let's go into the next one and um, try to work a few more. Let's look at aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide. Alright, so what we do is the same, you know, really the same story. We say, well, we have aluminum, that's Al, and we have oxide, which is oxygen. Okay, like that. What is the charge on aluminum? Now, aluminum is not on the, the far left of the peri periodic table. It is in the center in the transition metals. It always wants to be positive. It always wants to lose electrons. But it's not something you can count the columns to figure out the charge. Somewhere in your book, uh, I didn't provide it here because honestly every book is going to have this. Somewhere in your book it should tell you the charges, the most common charges of those transition metals. And if it doesn't tell you, you're going you're gonna to use them so much that you're going to end up memorizing them. Aluminum always wants to take, m more or less, always wants to take a plus three charge. That's something that you'll probably just remember. It should be listed in your book somewhere, but you can't get this by counting columns because it's in the center of the table. Oxygen wants to take two, uh, negative two charge. All right, so we do the same old game. We crisscross, so we do this. And so the final answer is going to be Al. The two goes there. The three goes there, O3, Al2O3. That's the answer, aluminum oxide. So you notice now, this is a great example to explain why we don't need to say dial, uh, dialuminum trioxide like for the molecular formulas, because aluminum is pretty much always going to want to have a plus three charge. Oxygen is pretty much always going to want to have a negative two charge. Because of that, the, when you put aluminum with oxygen, more or less, you're always going to get aluminum uh, Al2O3. So because you kind of know just from the name that the charges are going to result, that are going to lead to this equation, this formula, because you know that, there's really no need to say dialuminum trioxide. So basically what it amounts to is in chemistry over the years, this habit has arisen so that for these ionic compounds, you don't put the prefixes in there because you kind of implicitly know what it's going to form because of the charges on the ions. And the ions more or less are predictable. 
right? Oxygen is always going to have negative two. Aluminum is always going to have plus three. If you haven't already done so, I recommend that you, you, you crack your book open and figure out what table that you have in your chapter on ionic bonding that's going to tell you the charges of some of these transition metals. And uh, you'll probably end up memorizing a lot of them as well.